In this segment of Star Power, I'm going to show you some more variations using the same two shapes that we used at the beginning of the program. The first quilt that I'm going to share with you was created by Judy Block. Judy has done a wonderful job creating this quilt, and when you look closely at it, you'll see the same star in the center, but she's actually put most of the color in the eight points surrounding that center. Uh, star. It actually looks like the stars, or at, we'll call these snowflakes, it looks like the snowflakes are floating throughout the quilt and they're just randomly placed throughout the design. What she did when creating this pattern was she used a large flannel board or design wall and she placed the colors of each of the units where she thought she liked them before she actually sewed them together. Without doing that, you really don't know if it's equally balanced and what you want in the end. Then after she had the whole thing quilted, Linda did the machine quilting on it and she has really done a fabulous job with this pattern. She has done uh, feathered stars throughout the center of each of them and circular designs and then filled in around the outside edge. Something else that's interesting about this quilt, which we don't usually do, is Judy has used the same print in each one of these motifs. They're just different values. The texture exactly the same. It's just where she put the color and lets them float through the quilt at just at random. Very, very nicely done. The next one that I'm showing you has a more masculine feeling and this one was created by Cindy Kaufman. When you look at the eight points you'll see that they are filled in the center with pieces that have been fussy cut. This was done from a border print. The grays, the browns, and the lighter, the lighter background uh, color and the darker gray, they're all the same print. What really pulled the whole thing together was the border print along the outside edge. A great, great way to use the same shapes and create a different design. When you look at the fabric on the cutting board, you'll see that it's a border print. It looks very different when you buy it off of the bolt. But what's so fun about this fabric is that you can move the template around and select the part of that fabric that you want to cut around and then you'll get different designs. You can turn it to the, so to the side and get even some more designs. When you're all done cutting, you're going to have holes like this throughout the quilt. So let's see what we can do to find a really pretty one here. I'll show you how fun it can be. I think I'll take one right there and we will, it's very important again the fact that they're transparent so I can read what's going on underneath and the grips on top again make it easy so that it doesn't move around when I'm cutting. Make sure we've cut all the way around and on this side We'll finish off the cut and that's our first shape. Now we're going to go up and find that same piece of fabric and here's how I do that. I will place this one on top of the template and I'll move it along until I find that exact place in the fabric. Maybe I was wasting too much there. Here, there it is. 
right there. That's exactly where I cut the first one. Now that I have the placement right, we'll move it down a little bit so it's easier for me to cut. I'll remove this from the top and I'll cut around the second one. It does take longer to fussy cut, but it's really worthwhile after you've done so. Now this would be the variation where you have, I'll just move this off to the side so that you can see, but you see how that pattern is starting to come together in the center of the block. I won't cut all four of them, but you saw the effect in the quilt itself. Then if you place the template in another direction and go sideways, you can have a pattern that looks like this. It's really fun to see how many different stars you can get out of that same fabric. So with this one, I'm going to have the square center. With this one, I'll end up with something totally different, um, different and unique. And like I said, it has an, a very masculine looking feel to it. The cutting on this one is, is quite similar to what we did in the first part, but to save time, this time I'm going to cut all the layers at the same time. So because I use the same fabric, and I did mention I think at the beginning of the program that you can cut as many as six, six pieces at a time. I have cut the strips ahead of time, just line them up on top of each other, bifold, so you have all six layers. And now I'm going to lay this template up on top and we will cut through all of them at the same time. I like to spin the board around, it just makes it easier to work with. There, now we have all the different pieces, but that's how easy it is to do the cutting. And then we would just continue cutting more pieces until we had everything that we need. Well, now it's time to go to the design wall and look closely at everything laid out on the design wall. Remember I said it's important to use that when putting all of these pieces together. I'm so lucky because I'm able to press on this beautiful ironing surface furnished to us by Tracy's Tables. I love it because it has this long rectangular board and I can put the whole cloth on here instead of the regular ironing board where you have that narrow end. I'm able to get to the whole surface. I can work from any side of the table and I can store all of my extra things in the drawer that comes with it. It's great for holding threads and all of the extra things that you need in the sewing room. I'm standing in front of the design wall that I like to work at. In fact, it is impossible for me to do this pattern without having one of these at my side. As you can see, I have all of the quilt laid out in progress. The bottom of the quilt, you'll see a jagged edge along the bottom, and that's going to be trimmed off when we get all of the rows together. And then I've worked my way up as I've sewed the blocks together. Here we have an individual block ready, ready to go on. Going up a little farther, I'll show you how we can put the individual blocks in place. This is related right in here. You see how you have to make sure that they connect in the right place. And then this is your outside block that connects right in here. Again, that jagged edge that goes along the outside edge. The next one that's going to fit in here, actually, I probably have the wrong one, but we'll see. We'll turn them around and, oh, there it is. There's the right one. You see how that's starting to come together? And then this one would fit into here. Notice here how this star has this design. 
this one is going in this direction around and the one down in here remember when I was fussy cutting how you could move it around this one has a totally different look and again there's one over here that has still a different look all of the stars in this quilt are different because of the fussy cutting over here I have a, a star in progress the center star is sewn together I have left the quarter inch open along the outside edge already made the units ready to go on and here's another one ready to go then towards the top I have the last row ready to go on when I get to that point after all of the rows are connected together then I take the ruler line it up with the outside edge along here and I make sure that the quarter inch line on the ruler matches the point of each of these and then I'll trim this off to straighten the outside edge and I'll do that on all of the sections that are around the quilt to straighten the outside edge I don't think that it's necessary for me to show you how to actually construct this part of the star because I did it in the beginning of the program the process for making them is exactly the same it's just that the layout is different you have to really pay attention to where your color placement is like in this block you have the two um, browns in this corner here you have a brown and a gray two shades of gray and here you have a dark brown and a dark gray so you have to kind of make make note of that as you're putting it together and by taking them off here going to the machine back and forth it's really easy to keep track of your pieces the finishing touches on this particular quilt are a little bit different than the one that Cindy Kaufman did you'll see that in the open area here I have simply followed uh, with my home machine the quattro and I have stitched a quarter of an inch from the edge and this you can do on your own you don't have to have a long arm uh, to do it if that's the way you choose to go in the center here I have quilted a quarter of an inch from the edge just like on the other ones uh, doing a continuous line crazy eight and then focused on the diamond and stitched a quarter of an inch from the edge of those in the last part of star power I would like to show you some little tricks on how to make the table topper which we showed you in the beginning of the program designed by Judy Block this one has just two colors in the pattern down here on the table you'll see that I've added a third color to the design it's stepped out so that you can see how easy it goes together here I have sewn this row together and up here you'll see that I have partial pieces put together off to the left here you'll see that I have a real strange looking block and that's the cut in the book it shows you exactly how to get a block that looks like this the sewing technique is the same is just the order in which you put them together here's your completed block if I were to lay this on top of here it's exactly the same I have just left this part of it out so that's the section that goes here and then over here I have it stepped out so that you can see the completed corner unit here and the two side units notice how these two are a mirror image of each other on this one you have the gold on this side if I were to flip, flip these over you'll see that it truly is a mirror image of each other again using the design wall to put it together is very helpful after you have all of the rows sewn together in other words these seams in here and this one completed then what you're going to do just like we did on the other one is you'll lay the ruler up on top now this time you're going to go across the middle here and trim this section off and this section making sure that you keep your quarter inch here and the quarter inch there and then remove that and that's how you will get the completed octagon shape for a really nice table topper using two three colors 
or whatever you create with your own ideas. I sure hope you've been inspired to go on and create your own star power patterns. Thank you.